Hey, good evening, everybody. Glad to have you all joining us to uh, tonight, I guess, uh, tonight, and uh, to have everyone joining us online as well. Uh, I know we got uh, a number of people that have already tuned in that are uh, on our app, I see, and uh, uh, on the chat on YouTube and all of that, and uh, uh, some of our other uh, uh, places that we... Uh, uh, put our programs on as well and so glad to have all of you guys joining with us uh, this evening and uh, if my voice gets kind of weird tonight I just want to let you know I'm not going through puberty okay <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it's been pretty windy out there mixed with uh, the pollen and allergy stuff and and my next door neighbor has this this pollen producing evil tree uh, <laughs> that uh, is just awful. And so I've been struggling with this uh, allergies and sinuses and, and all of that. And so uh, uh, now that it's at the end of the day. So anyhow, if my voice goes crazy or whatever, uh, now you know why. So uh, but anyhow, um, it's really good to have you all. And uh, by the way, uh, I wasn't here on Wednesday night. Wednesday night uh, was her first night, but we've got another mod that's on our chat on YouTube, uh, Caterlin, who's, uh, uh, so many people know Caterlin, and she's just uh, su uh, such a wonderful blessing, and a lot of people are, are familiar with her in, uh, uh, on Bible prophecy chats and everything, and so I just want to personally welcome you uh, to your first uh, Sunday night uh, as a moderator, Caterlin, and of course, I always uh, welcome uh, all the rest of you all uh, as well. I see Sir Pierce the Veil, and uh, uh, oh my goodness, uh, I'm sure I'm not looking far back enough, but uh, and others will be joining as well, and glad to see um, everyone else that's on there as well. And so, all right, well, we got uh, always so many things to, uh, to go over. Uh, I do want to share, uh, for those that are watching online, please like us, uh, you know, hit the thumbs up uh, on there and uh, uh, like, subscribe to our, our channel on YouTube if you are not subscribed to it, subscribe to our Rumble channel, uh, subscribe to, I guess if you want to call it that, subscribe or get our app, our free app in the App Store, uh, we're on Facebook, our website, all of that stuff, so that in the event that one thing goes down, or we get taken down, um, you've got the other things ready to just jump on over. So uh, that always tends to work out uh, pretty good. And I always like to thank everyone for your support, your uh, prayer support, encouragement support. Um, you guys just say truly just uh, the nicest things, and it's so encouraging, um, you know, to the ministry, financial support, uh, all of those things. All of, the, all of that really does make a big, big difference. So I um, I did mention last Sunday night and on our Thursday program. By the way, if you missed last Sunday night, well, what's wrong with you? No, if you missed last Sunday night when I had on uh, as our guest uh, Mondo Gonzalez, man, guys, it was just such a wonderful time. We had great conversation, the things that we were talking about and everything. If you missed it, I encourage you to check out last Sunday night's Maranatha. And if you missed this past uh, Thursday's program, which is our midweek Maranatha, always at noon Pacific, uh, time. Uh, we had on J.B. Hickson, and that was, again, a wonderful, wonderful uh, time. You know, uh, J.B. and I were talking really primarily uh, having to do with the false prophet. Uh, two Thursdays ago, uh, I was talking in regards to uh, the final Antichrist. Last Sunday, we were talking about uh, a number of different things from uh, uh, the uh, red heifer and the eclipse that's coming and uh, some other things on there as well and answering a lot of questions. So that was a lot of fun. But this coming Thursday, I've got J, uh, not JB, I've got uh, Lee Brainer that's going to be joining us and uh, he's just a, a good good friend of the ministry and, and of mine as well. And uh, so I encourage you to check out this Thursday's program uh, with that. And next Sunday night, being that it is Resurrection Sunday and after our morning services, we've got the whole event going on uh, under the tents and the parking lot and everything. So we're not going to be having the Maranatha Prophecy Update next Sunday night. So, and I know I got, I, there's like so much news I got to share with everyone tonight. 
Uh, the other thing, as I've been sharing, um, is I've got a program, so um, we are uh, collaborating together, uh, Hope uh, for Our Times and, uh, uh, and myself, our ministry as well, and uh, they've asked if, uh, if I would have a bi-weekly show or program that I would put on, on Hope for Our Times. So that, uh, as I announced last week, uh, we were going to, uh, or they were going to put that on this Saturday, but uh, some things changed in the scheduling, and so now um, that's been put ahead to uh, April 5th. So instead of Saturdays uh, uh, every other week, it's going to be Fridays every other week, beginning April 5th for that program. So I encourage you to uh, check that out. And uh, it's, I think you're really going to like um, what we've got there and what we're doing there uh, with that. In fact, I've, I've named uh, the name of the program uh, through the lens. It's through the lens of, uh, of Scripture because uh, all of this, uh, guys, it doesn't mean anything uh, apart from uh, the lens of God's Word, you know. And so, um, but anyhow, so that's where we get the title of it. And uh, each week it's going to be a different uh, obviously a different um, subject matter and we'll pick one subject and we are going to just go with it. So uh, I think uh, the one that, uh, that I titled for that first one that's coming out is Labs, Liars, and Lunatics. So Labs, Liars, and Lunatics. So hope you can tune in for that. Okay, so enough of all of the news, at least for, <laughs> for right now, on some of that stuff. So let's just open up with a word of prayer. I, don't, I think that's a real, real good idea. So, uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, this evening. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful day, this Palm Sunday. It's absolutely amazing. It's cool, Lord. Your word is cool. Uh, and, and, Lord, you are just amazing. We just pray, Lord, may you bless our time tonight, Lord. Uh, bless our discussion and lead us and guide us in Jesus' precious name. And all God's church said, amen and amen. All right. By the way, this morning, um, our service, uh, Hosanna in the Highest, on um, uh, talking about um, uh, Palm Sunday and all of that, uh, which today is, if you missed that, uh, for some reason, I just had a green screen up behind you guys there. I don't know what went wrong. Um, but if you missed that uh, this morning for, um, you know, any reason, I encourage you to check that out. Check that out because we went through just a number of things in the prophecy of God's word having to do with what today is, why it's important, uh, why we celebrate it, uh, why it is Palm Sunday, all of that. And so if you missed that, you really want to check that out because like I said, we got into uh, some really cool, cool uh, prophecy there um, with that. So and we might even uh, talk about just a little bit about that um, perhaps later. OK, so. Um, but with that being said, with that being said, let's get right on to it this evening. And we're going to be showing uh, some videos here uh, shortly as well. And so um, uh, with one of them, I, I will have or do have a, a little bit of a um, warning that will go along with that one here uh, pretty shortly. But anyhow, so let's get started. You know, we're talking, we talk so much about the advancements in technology and, and hey, I like technology, well, providing that it works for me. Um, you know, we get so dependent upon the technologies that then when they don't work, it, it really does kind of become rather problematic. That's one of the reasons why I always encourage everyone, hey, if you've got, uh, you know, electronic Bibles or, you know, Bibles online and all that kind of stuff, hey, that's all good, that's all great. Uh, it's just another avenue for, uh, for reading or whatnot, but make sure that you have hard copies uh, of the word <clears throat> at your disposal uh, as well. But um, 
super intelligence, artificial super intelligence. So we've been talking for quite a while about AI, which is artificial intelligence. We've been talking about AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. That's when it, it takes it uh, to another level where it begins to uh, think and, and reason at a human level. Uh, that is the direction that they are, that many in the scientific world are hoping it will go. There are also many in the scientific world that are hoping it does not go there uh, because that can be a pretty scary thing uh, indeed. And then there's also this right here. There we go. Artificial super intelligence or ASI. Um, could arrive by 2027, scientists uh, predict. So, and, uh, so it's a bold prediction. And uh, so listen now, uh, this is what they say. We may not have reached artificial general intelligence yet, okay? But as one of the leading experts in the theoretical field claims, it may get here sooner rather than later. And during the closing remarks of... Uh, this year's beneficial AGI summit in Panama, computer scientists and um, uh, enthusiasts, and I can't even say the guy's last name, so we're just call, gonna call him Ben G, said that uh, although people must uh, most likely won't be, or won't build human level or superhuman, AI until 2029 or 2030, which like that's a long time away, right? Not at all. There's a chance that it could happen as soon as 2027. So, um, and guys, these are, are the things that are very concerning uh, to a number of them uh, out there. Of course, any country, any uh, nation, uh, nation state that's out there wants to uh, harness these kinds of technologies just uh, like in harnessing drone technology as well and specifically drone swarms. What you can do with dr uh, dr uh, drone swarms is absolutely overwhelm uh, an adversary and enemy's defenses by sheer numbers. Well, when we're talking about things uh, with AI, AGI, um, uh, ASI, all of that as, as the levels kind of move up, and who knows where else it could even go from there, shall they be able to develop these things? And, uh, and I do wonder, you know, is I believe that these are some of the things that will be utilized um, by the hands of the final false prophet, or the final antichrist, I should say, and that uh, world uh, empire, uh, one world global government under the antichrist, I, I call it Rome 2.0, uh, that uh, to have the kind of control that we read in the Word of God uh, is going to take something that is more than what we, uh, well, in my growing ups, in all the years that I've known the Lord, more than I ever could have imagined. I tried to put the, the pieces together when I was younger in the Lord, and like, how is all of this going to come about? Not that I ever questioned that it would, but just curious as to, the how as to the technicalities, uh, so to speak, of those things. And I believe that the technologies that we are seeing uh, right now before us are going to play a part. And I think even a pretty major part um, in the time of the end. Right now, we could call this uh, any number of things. Maybe we could call this time that we are in the great setup. The great setup for what? The great setup for what we see uh, in Scripture. So uh, these are the technologies that they're working on. Uh, in fact, in this article, it says, my view is once you get to human level AGI, which is it's kind of uh, strange that they would word it that way because that is what AGI is. But within a few years, you could get a radically superhuman AGI. I mean, think about this stuff, guys. Think about these 
things unless the AGI threatens to throttle its own development out of its own conservatism. The AI pioneer added, I think once an AGI can introspect its own mind, listen, then it can do engineering and science at a human or even superhuman level. Wow. Wow. Now, when something like that is in, <clears throat> see, there I go, is in, <laughs> I told everyone, if, you, if you're joining late, it's, it, it, it's not uh, uh, puberty, so <laughs> it's allergies. So when you're talking about that kind of technology, guys, and it's controlled or wielded by someone with bad intentions, that really gets very concerning indeed. In fact, I would like you to turn for just a moment to the book of Revelation. Now, I know you all know where that is because it's the last book in the Bible. Revelation chapter 13. Let's move back here for just a moment to verse uh, 11. We'll just pick up in verse 11 here. Then I saw another beast coming up from out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes, uh, so we're talking about the false prophet here, by the way, the false prophet um, exercising the authority of the first beast, which is the Antichrist. And he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. And, you know, this is a real dangerous thing, guys. And actually, I'm actually kind of just thinking about this uh, in the moment and on the fly is when you, in a, in the wrong way, which of course we know that all of this is, is seriously jacked up, that we're reading about in Revelation 13, when you add a spiritual component to government, when you add a spiritual component to wicked government, that is truly a scary thing because we see when we're looking here, we're going to con continue in a moment. We see global government and global religion merging together, coming together. We, we can call it the one, two punch. We can call it, uh, you know, Batman and, uh, and Robin kind of thing there and coming together and working together. Right. So you're deceiving people on a political level. You're deceiving people on a religious level and utilizing that religious influence of one world global religion to back up what will be taking place on the political uh, and geopolitical uh, scene, globally speaking. Very, very dangerous indeed. Of course, we know both of these are evil to the core. And it says, and he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes all that are on the earth who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He, verse 13, and he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. And he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak <clears throat> and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And then it goes on from there and begins to talk about the mark of the beast and, uh, and all of that. Now think about this. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. Now we read of lying signs and wonders in the word, right? 
in the time of the end, lying signs and wonders. And, I, and it's really interesting how it words it that way. Because we can look at signs and wonders today and they can fool people, guys, like there is no tomorrow. Supposed signs, supposed wonders, right? Now, our God does incredible, wonderful, and miraculous things. One of the names of God is, is Jehovah Rapha, that it's the Lord our healer, right? But there's false healings we see as well. I've shown videos and have given proof and evidence to those things, by the way, in the past, okay? And it's rather concerning, obviously, the deception that can be wielded by way of religion, or shall I say false religion. Now, if you unite religion, false religion, okay, this global religious system with certain technologies, and of course with demonic entities, we know that demonic entities are all over the situations that take place during the tribulation, you have got something rather deceiving indeed. Now, how do we, can we know and recognize what is deceiving as Christians, as followers of Christ? How do we know? How do we know? That's right. The word of truth. The word of truth. Scripture. Our Bibles. That is how and what we compare everything to. Now, there will be those that come to Christ during the tribulation, the tribulation saints. And those tribulation saints, how are they going to know? Scripture. The same thing. Scripture. But these things are very, uh, very concerning and very, uh, well, again, an unbelieving world is going to fall, fall I believe, hook line and sinker uh, for those things. But you see in Matthew 24, 5, we see about false Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, doctrines of demons. Matthew 24, 24, false Christ, false prophets, etc. False teachers in uh, Acts chapter 20, and so on and so forth. A lot of deception these days, isn't there? There certainly is. Now let's move on from there. We also see deception in the United Nations. We see great deception in the White House, in government. It's in both political parties, both political parties. We see great deception in the World Economic Forum. We see it in the Bilderberg Group, Council on Foreign Relations. Club of Rome, all of these things. Great deception <clears throat> in the WHO. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. WHO, the World Health Organization. Now look at this right here. Gaffney. Now this is a, a, on uh, American Family News. Beware of the who, not, not the band. Beware of the World Health Organization's digital gulag and more. See, things are, everything is going towards digital. Do you know why? I got the answer for you. Because when things go digital, it gives them control. It gives them power. You see, we have more control, not total control by any means, but we have more control when we have paper money. We will have less control when there is digital money. We have more control when we have paper books and paper Bibles. There will be less control when those things are digitized. Because when those things are digitized, you've got repressive regimes and communist nations and those kinds of things that suppress information. They're doing it right now as we speak. <clears throat> Many countries right now and a lot of these things have come about as a result of um, the digital uh, services act dsi i think it was um, 
back in uh, Europe there the latter part of last year. And as a result of that, what happened is there are a number of sites that people were viewing before that they are not, uh, it's not so easy for them to view today. All right? And we know this for a fact. And it's a result of those things. Why? Because the more ground they gain and the more they can control digitally, the more they can A, either manipulate the information, right? So it's information control. It's also information um, suppression. So beware of the who's digital gulag and more. So an internationally recognized expert on foreign and defense policy matters says Americans aren't aware that a China model of pandemic response could soon be adopted on their behalf. The WHO is continuing to, uh, to beat its drum for a global alliance to combat the next, guess what, right? The whole diaper thing, the, you know what we're talking about here, right? To combat it. Guys, listen, this guy right here has even said, hey, we weren't locking, we weren't enforcing lockdowns, we weren't enforcing people to get this, and we weren't enforcing this and all this kind of stuff. You know, if you speak a lie often enough, eventually many people will begin to believe it. Isn't that exactly what happened in pre-World War II Nazi Germany and leading into World War II, Nazi Germany. The Jews are the problem in the world and the Jews are the cause of the wars and the Jews are the cause of the, of the, the situation that was existing at the time in uh, Nazi Germany and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, deal, we uh, do away with the Jews. We have this, this super race, you know, and, uh, and what were they doing? Well, their scientists and all were uh, moving ahead in eugenics. You can do the research on, on the eugenics and the eugenics programs that they were utilizing because they wanted to bring about their master race. Guys, this is nothing new. It goes all the way back into Genesis chapter 6. We've talked about that with the Nephilim and in various times since then. And we are seeing that. We saw that during, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chairs. And um, uh, seeing that during World War II, and they're doing these things to this very day as well, guys. Gene manipulation. Whether we're talking about gene manipulation in animals, gene manipulation in um, the foods that the animals eat or we eat, right? What do you call genetically modified uh, foods, right? GMOs, right? Gene manipulation within humans. What do you think uh, mRNAs are, folks? Do you know mRNAs were never used on humans until the situation that transpired four and a half years ago, roughly, okay? Until they came out with some of these. Think about it. You ever wonder why so many people are just uh, dropping dead? Seriously. Have you ever checked out the research on, on uh, the blood clots and what the morticianers are finding in the blood clots of people who have had the pokey? Hmm? Right? Cancers are soaring right now, and it's really interesting. When you trace people that have had shots, and it doesn't mean that everyone that, that has those things get that, get that stuff, by the way. OK, um, but we do know that a number of people do. And uh, again, all of that. And guys, it's manipulation. So beware of the World Health Organization's digital gulag and 
more. And so um, they're calling for all of this stuff. And guys, they want total control. They want to be able to control the people, to control the masses. Um, and they didn't have enough of control uh, four years ago. What they're planning right now is absolutely off the rails if it actually passes in May of this year. Okay, so deception. Deception in the time of uh, the end. And uh, look, guys, we're leading right into that as we speak. Fox News, Christians attack. <coughs> Christians attack chat GPT generated fake Bible verse about Jesus endorsing transgenderism. So see, guys, this is this is where it gets it really starts getting dangerous, right? And when you got these kids on on uh, this, you know, communist TikTok, all right? TikTok is a really bad thing, guys. I'm telling you. Uh, it's not something that, that any uh, uh, adult or kid uh, should be on. And when we actually have Congress actually giving warnings about this as well, um, involved, you know, to our U.S. military and whatnot, guys, I mean, it's really a serious thing. All right. And um, but anyhow, Christians attack the chat GPT generated fake Bible verse about Jesus endorsing transgenderism. Wow. So Christians are responding to that. And this is this is um, this isn't new. OK, this this happened. I don't know how many months ago now. Right. And uh, the report uh, generated by chat GPT said that Jesus accepts trans identified individuals stating that, quote, there is no man nor woman. No man nor woman and a woman whose heart was divided between spirit and body came before him. Uh, the fake passage, by the way, it's a fake Bible verse. It's not a true Bible verse. And I just quoted for you reads in quiet despair. She asked, Lord, I come to you estranged for my spirit and body are not one. How shall I hope to enter the kingdom of God? Jesus looked upon her with kindness, replying, my child, blessed are those who strive for unity within themselves, for they shall know the deepest truths of my father's creation. The passage continued, be not afraid for in the kingdom of God, there is no man nor woman as all are one in the spirit, the gates of my father's kingdom will open for those who love and are loved. For God looks not upon the body, but upon the heart. So you got chat GPT playing Mr. Potato Head with body parts. This really is. And saying that this is coming from God and this is coming from uh, scripture, which is a total and complete lie. Guys, the deceptions that are being brought upon people are absolutely astounding. Okay, so let's move on from that. Check this one out right here. Biden called out on evidence he's targeting Christians. Targeting Christians. Guys, this is nothing new. We have talked a lot about the growing atmosphere of persecution in America. Now, when I say persecution, there's light persecution. Then there's, you know, uh, moving all the way up into hard persecution of the Christian church. We are in the stage where it is the early stages of persecution. All right. That's how persecution always begins. It always begins in the early stages of persecution. You've got a Christ-rejecting world that either doesn't notice or doesn't care. You've got some in the body of Christ that are just oblivious to those things. It's kind of like what was going on um, in um, the earlier uh, stages there of Nazi Germany. Where you'd have, uh, you know, some of the churches, you know, you have trains and train tracks and those things in the day. And as the trains would be going by um, uh, with uh, and going through and it would have um, so many of the Jewish people in them that it was taking to the concentration camps. And what would sometimes the pastor say? We have records of this, guys. Turn up, sing louder, sing louder, sing louder so that it would drown out the sounds of what they were hearing guys okay think about that how sad is that 
I think that things may be going in that direction at some point. And when I say that, uh, I'm saying about in America. The federal government's attacks on Christians, now listen, gained prominence under Barack Obama when he insisted that faith-based organizations pay for abortions for employees as part of their health insurance. So in other words, when you say that, hey, my faith, according to the word of God, this is murder and I will honor God rather than man. And they're making these faith faith based organizations provide insurances that could provide for abortions for like, for example, let's say you've got a member on your faith based. I mean, there's a number of faith based based organizations not it's not just churches right and let's say one of your employees is a male and let's say that that male who loves the lord is married he came to the lord let's say some point after he was married years later whatever he's on staff at some faith-based organization he's married to a woman who doesn't know the lord right Well, she got pregnant. She's included under the insurance plan, of course, right? It's usually or often the case. She's insisting on getting abortion. See, this is how something like this plays out, guys, okay? This is how something like this plays out. Now you've got quite the problem because you've got this faith-based organization that is providing insurance and the government says you have to provide this kind of insurance and your people have to be able to have this as an option even though you're hiring believers. Something like this can happen, okay? And now it also becomes an issue in the very household of one of the people that you have on staff in your faith-based organization. Are you with me? Okay, this is just one example. This is one example. See, what they're trying to tell us to do as Christians is say, look, your faith in your, your Jesus is okay until it gets in our way. Okay? Your faith is okay until we don't like it anymore, until it gets in our way. Guys, again, this is how persecution starts. I'm telling you. And it continues to ratchet up from there. Evil triumphs. Remember the old saying? Evil triumphs when good men do something? No, when good men do nothing. The word shows us to stand on righteousness. We're going to go through. (coughs) Sorry. We're going to go through some of these verses here shortly. Okay, but this is a very serious uh, issue indeed. Very serious. One part of the toolkit has resources to battle Islamophobia, offers suggestions on how to spot misleading information on religious groups. Users are referred to a website called Muslim Girl, which is described as a source um, for credible voices of Muslim Americans challenging anti-Muslim, what they call anti-Muslim bigotry. Um, this, is, <clears throat> this is all part of Biden's online posting. He has this online posting called Allied Against Hate, a toolkit for faith communities. So a man who doesn't know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, he has his administration have this toolkit for faith communities and they begin to dictate these kinds of things one website website post or piece the report exclaimed actually claims <clears throat> that christian zionist evangelicals were the greater threat to the jews than the palestinians or the so-called Palestinians. Guys, this is the kind of stuff that's coming out of this administration. I want you to understand that. This is the kind of stuff that's coming out of this administration. Now, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. We know that persecution is here, and it is growing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 11 through 12, shows about enduring persecution. 
In fact, I would like you to turn for just a moment to 1 Peter, though. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning in verse 12. <clears throat> it says, Beloved, do not think it so strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice, rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Christ's suffering. In other words, the honor of being able to say, to think, to realize that I am not even worthy to suffer on account of his name. I am not even worthy to suffer persecution. It is an honor to suffer persecution for the testimony of the name of Jesus Christ. It was such an honor for the Apostle Peter that when they went to crucify him, you know what his request was? His request was this, please don't crucify me in the same manner in which my Lord was crucified. And he requested to be crucified upside down because he didn't even consider the manner of being crucified in like manner as Christ as being worthy of that. That was his concern. I, I can't even fathom such a mindset. But it goes on to say, now listen, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad, listen now, with exceeding joy. Glad with exceeding joy. I want you to examine this photo that I'm going to show you here. It's a screenshot. And the screenshot was from a prophecy conference last year. And uh, I just had to, I had to get a screenshot of this as, as, as quickly as I, as I could. I want you to check this out. This was a prophecy conference from last year. Christian persecution. A Massachusetts eight-year-old boy was sent home from school and ordered to undergo psychiatric evaluation after he drew a picture of Jesus on the cross. Ordered. This is in America. Ordered to go through psychiatric evaluation. An eight-year-old. They want to mess up our kids. They want to mess up our kids. They want to de... Well, let me find the, the best word to, word, uh, to, to say this. They want to, yes, they want to demoralize and they want to program your children and indoctrinate them, yes. Guys, this is, this is reminiscent of the Hitler youth. Okay? It's interesting how history repeats itself. It just kind of changes and morphs a little bit. But with the Hitler youth, what did they do? They began to train them and to indoctrinate them. There were, there were different reasons for it. That One of them is they were losing so many men on the battlefield, they had to start really going to the youth. But um, that was only part of the reason. And so they were indoctrinating them. If you get them while they're young and impressionable and you establish those habit patterns, listen, when they are young and, uh, and impressionable, it is harder to break those habit patterns. It's harder to break that mindset. They are trying to manipulate the children. This was uh, That's the reason why I took a picture of that screenshot. Just absolutely astounding. Absolutely astounding. Here in America. Okay. Let's change gears a little bit. Similar in some regards, but a little bit. Now I'm going to put out a, a disclaimer here. Okay. Um, this could be traumatizing. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not joking. This could be traumatizing for some um, to, uh, to listen to this at first. So, so you know it, it, it's coming, the screaming. Okay, in this. Um, scripture says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
There is a spiritual war that we are in. The only difference is this. Some Christians recognize that and some Christians don't. They still love the Lord, okay? But some Christians recognize it and some Christians don't. The things that we read about in our Bible, guys, is, 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 is same, same God. He said, I am God, I change it not. He doesn't change. And the things that go on and even the enemy's tactics, even though some of the particulars of what the enemy does, how the enemy does what he does, I should say, can change, still the very core of them is, um, is very much the same. I've been aware of these things for many years. Um, uh, one of the churches I came from uh, uh, had uh, this situation happen. Um, another uh, ministry with some uh, very close friends of ours had this happen uh, at different times as well. And there was a number of people who actually saw this and witnessed this today. What is it that I'm referring to? But a woman, a woman possessed by demons, a demon or demons, I don't know at this point in time how many, um, was on a live broadcast of a church service today. And check this out right here. You're not going to see her. You're going to hear what is going on during the service. This was at J, uh, Pastor J.D. Farag's uh, Calvary Chapel Church today. Let me turn it up. That took place, uh, I, I don't know if it was during worship, or, or it, but it was during the, the service, whether it was the teaching part or the worship part or whatever, I, I, I really don't remember. Um, and um, literally, she's screaming out, okay, um, possessed by a demon or demons, and uh, Pastor JD, and, and it, it sounds like others in the back there are... Um, um, are trying to deal with this and, you know, and, and cast out. I mean, it's just, uh, her name, by the way, if memory serves me right, uh, her name is Tracy. In fact, why don't we just pray for her right now, shall we? Because prayer is what needs to be. Father, we just pray right now um, this whole situation that, that took place today with this woman, uh, this possessed woman there at the church service uh, um, at Pastor J.D.'s church. Lord, I don't know, uh, we don't know, at least at this time, uh, what has uh, transpired since this um, video had come out or the service which was interrupted um, by this woman. Uh, but Lord, we just pray about this situation right now. Lord, we know that there is demonic activity in the world around us. We know that there are those that are demon-possessed. We know that uh, there are those that, um, that have been set free from demon possession. And we read about demonic activity throughout the word, Lord, and even uh, in the book of Revelation in the time of the end. Lord, we just pray for her, Lord. We pray uh, that if those demons have not been fully exercised from her, Lord, that they would be fully exercised from her in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for her trust, uh, or for her to put her trust and faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord, because if she doesn't, they will, they, we know in your word, Lord, that they will come back and even bring more. And so, Lord, we pray for her, Lord. We pray for her, Lord. Put ahead, deliver her, bring her to the faith, open her eyes, Soften her heart, set her free, 
Fill her with your Holy Spirit. Put a hedge of protection around her. Lord, we pray for Pastor J.D. We pray for the entire church, the congregation. Lord, the enemy comes to kill, steal, destroy. He loves to distract. He loves to, uh, to just do these kinds of things. He comes to control, Lord, and he wants the soul. Lord, we just pray right now um, just for your peace, Lord God, uh, which we know that the congregation and Pastor J.D. has, uh, uh, Lord, right now. And uh, we just, again, lift up that woman to you in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, these things, and so when you read in the Word and you read of the demonic activity and you read of, of sata- satanic activity, um, which you see, in fact, even in uh, Revelation chapter 13 uh, at the you know, halfway point there that the Antichrist uh, literally becomes possessed by Satan himself. Folks, um, this is nothing to mess around with. The enemy plays for keeps. The enemy plays for keeps. So pastors respond to a skyrocketing hostility against churches. We've talked about this recently. Not going to stop me from taking a stand. Pastors respond to this. And, uh, and I don't have the photo to bring up here uh, for you, but uh, we see different pastors here and, and uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs as well. Now, um, you're all familiar. I believe many of you are familiar with um, what happened um, Around a month ago, when Pastor Jack Hibbs uh, there uh, was asked by the current Speaker of the House to uh, give the the prayer there at Congress uh, as a guest chaplain that particular day, right? Did any of you were are some of you aware of this? Have some of you seen the video uh, of this and everything? Guys, Pastor Jack has come under so much attack. There has been so much vitriol uh, against him. It has just been absolutely insane. Insane. So I would like you to watch, first of all, the first three minutes of this, and then we're going we're gonna to go to another video when he was actually uh, praying before Congress. But let's watch the first three minutes of this here. Our next guest equips his church to push back against the dark forces at school boards, Congress, and more. In his new book, Living in the Days of Deception, he discusses how we can all stand firm in the righteousness today. Please welcome to the show the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel in Chino Hills, California, Pastor Jack Hibbs. Thank you. Well, We are so honored to have you. We always love having you here. So thank you for coming back. You pastor an incredible church in California, in Southern California, and you've been standing strong and you're continuing to stand strong. And you have your new book out, Living in the Days of Deception, which I want us to get into. But first, you were at Congress recently. Yeah. And I'm so proud of you because you took once again another strong stand. I want you to tell the viewers this story because I think I was shocked. I think they're going to be shocked to hear how restrictive they were for a pastor praying. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We're not exactly sure when these rules came into effect. But at some point in time, if you're going to pray in Congress, which according to Benjamin Franklin and our founding fathers, that's how we are to open up our government. A lot of people forget about that, that there's supposed to be a separation of church and state. Well, our founding fathers said we're not going to start the business of the nation without prayer. And so that happens continually. People don't realize that. And so I was blessed and honored that uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson invited me to come in and to open up Congress in prayer. And uh, yet there are existing rules that say, for example, you you can't have a prayer more than 150 words. You're, you're, you're to avoid father, offend some people. You wow. can't bring up Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior what? because that's proselytizing. So I put together in a hurry, this is kind of embarrassing to reveal on TV, but I put my prayer together quickly and sent it off. And then as uh, I got close to heading into D.C. Uh, in L.A., getting ready to go, um, I just reviewed my prayer again and I realized um, I just had to ask God, I'm sorry for this prayer. Mm. Yeah. And so I just, I rewrote it right then and there and put it in my pocket. And so went to Congress, 
had it there with me, prayed that prayer. And uh, apparently the first sentence uh, caused the atheist to get all excited. I opened that prayer by saying, Father, we thank you for our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> our, and, and just the first sentence got atheists upset, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Because if you're an atheist, why should you be upset <laughs> at a prayer? Why does it uh, but then they countered back by saying, you know, the separation of church and state. Well, I didn't ask to be there. <laughs> Right, the government asked me to come and pray. So it just goes, you know, it goes with the days of deception mm -hmm. where people will express their worldview without God and they expect you to roll over and play dead. But right. if you know his. Did you hear that? And they expect you to roll over and play dead. Things are changing very quickly in America, aren't they? Things are changing very quickly and very rapidly in our country. That was on um, Daystar Television uh, Network, by the way, um, which was uh, there. That video was on, uh, on YouTube and all of that. Well, guys, since then, since then, Congress, many in Congress, not all in Congress, uh, many in Congress, they wrote an official letter denouncing Pastor Jack Hibbs. This is where we are at as a nation. He's asked to come and be a guest chaplain and to pray. He prays and then they denounce him or many of them denounce him. In fact, if you look on here, let me see, I should have. Oh, before I get into some of that, let's listen to the prayer. It's about, I think, maybe two minutes or something like that. Let's listen to the prayer. The house will be in order. The prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, Chino, California. <clears throat> Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility as a people in need of your forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same that this nation and its unparalleled constitution, your great gift to all freedom-loving people, might be renewed here and across this land as a beacon of hope to all who seek peace. I ask you today, Father, to bring to us a great awakening of righteousness and confidence in you, who alone is mighty to save. Hear my cry in this hour of great need that we might be humbly blessed before you in the repentance of our national sins. You, almighty God, are the source of all wisdom, and there is no wisdom but that which comes from you. So please come upon those here who are the stewards over the business of our nation with your wisdom, which comes from above, and with your holy fear, knowing that your coming day of judgment draws near when all who have been and are now in the authority will answer to you, the great judge of heaven and of earth, for the decisions that they make here in this place. I offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen to that, man. That's just fantastic. Fantastic. I think that was some, uh, something I saw the prayer heard around the world, you know. Uh, that's just incredible. By the way, uh, when I say, when I read from certain sites or say that this or that video is posted from here or there, um, whether it be Daystar or whatever it is, it doesn't mean I'm supporting any particular uh, site. I'm just simply saying where those things um, uh, came from. The point of the video is the video itself, not where it's posted on or, or anything like that. But uh, even after this, the house chaplain even went up to him and thanked him for his prayer. Think about that. 
and then to have Congress do this. So check that out right there. Dear Speaker Johnson and uh, Chaplain, uh, the chaplain right there. And this is official. This is official document from the Congress of the United States. The undersigned members write to express our concerns about Speaker Johnson's sponsorship of Pastor Jack Hibbs as the guest chaplain, etc., etc., etc. Pastor Hibbs is a radical Christian nationalist who helped fuel the January 6th insurrection. Now, I'm saying this because all of this is leading to the next thing. Guys, Pastor Jack Hibbs, to my understanding, has now been put on the no-fly list. We have to understand what is going on. Okay? We have to understand what is going on. Now, this is a, a very well-known national, if you want to call national pastor, I think you all understand what I mean by that, or with a, a, a very national and global uh, scope, um, you know, his ministry and all of that, okay? And when you have Congress, so they're setting it up. And so when they're saying he helped fuel, direct words, it's right there, the January 6th insurrection, and has a long record of spewing hateful vitriol towards non-Christians, immigrants, and members of the LGBT community. He never should have been granted the right to deliver the House opening prayer on January 30th, 2024. It goes on to say in this whole thing, in the days leading up to the attack on, um, you know, that took place on that day, Hibbs echoed Donald Trump's election fraud lies and inflamed his followers by preaching that the month after December, the day after the 5th, right, you know what I mean, would go down in history alongside the War of Independence and the War of 1812. They go on and on and on. They called him an anti-Semite. Congress called him an anti-Semite. If you know anything about Jack Hibbs, you know that that is absolutely as false as false can be, okay? Just the lies that they have said, guys, and it becomes part of the official record, part of the official record. There is great deception, folks, and when I say that they are coming after Christians in America, I mean it. I mean it. Serious stuff. So it's all this. I'm not saying that Mike Johnson, but I'm saying it's it. But what Congress has done, it's all setting things up. Then they 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 add this to this and this to this. And then we're at this uh, this point that we are at right now, among other things. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And it shows here. Uh, here's more of the letter right there. Here are some of the signatures right here. Of course, um, uh, where is her name on this list? I think it's on the next. Oh, oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Gerald Nadler. Uh, Y'all, or, or Gary, yeah, whatever his name. Yeah. And then this one here. Uh, you got Ilian Omer, right? Part of the squad. And guys, come on. Okay. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder. We can't have our heads in the sand as to what's going on. We can't have our head. Now, what do we do? Do we pick up arms and fight? Well, of course not. Of course not. I mean, what did Peter try to do in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane? The, you know, he cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest. You know, I think sometimes Christians are too busy cutting off ears. All right, if you know what I'm saying here. All right. What we need to be, what, our fight is on our knees. Our fight is speaking the truth, by the way. Not hiding in a proverbial closet, so to speak, but speaking the truth, my friends. Speaking the truth. So what does it mean? We'll get into more of this here in a minute. Let me just go back here. We talk about righteousness. Well, if everything that's going to happen is going to happen anyway, then live and let live. Right? Then what is it? Why, why do we even need to do anything? Well, why do we even need to evangelize? 
Well, because the Lord said so. That's all I need. Go and pre- speak the good news, right? And so we do that. But we, call, we are called to stand on righteousness. Certainly not on unrighteousness and certainly not to remain silent. I don't see that in the word. I see the opposite, standing on righteousness. One of the definitions of righteousness can be this. Behavior that is morally acceptable. Okay. Now, now listen, folks. Now listen clearly. Faith without what is dead. Works. Okay. Works would be an action word, would it not? Come on now, right? Works would be an action word. Faith without action is dead. Faith without works is dead. What did the Apostle Paul say? Oh, you show me your faith, I'll show you my faith and my works, basically, right? We are not saved by our works. Our works are an outflow of our salvation. We spoke about that briefly this morning, okay? Faith plus works. Faith without works is dead. A behavior that is morally acceptable would be one of the extensions of works, would it not? Are they aware? Do they see? Not just here, and even from many Christians today, they don't even speak of their faith at all. It's, it just becomes a closeted thing. They'll speak about the, you know, uh, the Oakland A's, but, but, but what about the Lord, the most important thing of all? I just don't know. I, I, I got to just put it out there, guys. I don't understand why someone, the most important, the most important thing in, one, in, in a Christian's life is the Lord. And yet... Christians will talk about other things, and, not, and you can talk about other things. But what about talking about Jesus? What about talking about the indwelling and the filling and the empowering of the Holy Spirit? What about taking a stand on righteousness? Evil triumphs when good men do not something, nothing. I want to be a man who does something. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't even feel like I do enough. I really don't. There's so much more that I want to do. I pray, God, give me the opportunities for whatever you put before me. If you open the door, may I walk through it. If you close the door, may I not, no touchy touchy, you know. <laughs> but if you open it, I want to go through it. Whatever that is, whatever that means. And that means hardship for the, for the Christian church. Scripture speaks about persecution, varying forms of it, and enduring the persecution and all, you know. A behavior that is morally acceptable. Let's take a look here for a moment. You know, um, 558 times you find the word righteous. Yeah, when I was growing up, you know, a long time ago, you know, we'd go, righteous, dude, you know, that's just how we talked back then. Um, I still say dude all the time, and, you know, sometimes it even comes out when I'm speaking in my messages, like, dude, what's, you know, um, but uh, I, I, I've dropped the righteous part, I guess. But anyhow, the word right, we find this 558 times in, in, uh, in Scripture, you know. And it, it, obviously, it's an, it's an extremely important thing um, to talk about, you know. Here's some Bible verses dealing with righteousness. Just put it out there before you. In these last days, how much more important is it to shine the light? What did Jesus say? Now, wouldn't this be an, an example of righteousness? Let your light so shine that they may see your, what is it? Good works and glorify God in heaven. 
That's taking a stand on righteousness, is it not? Amen? Is it not? Micah 6, 8, he has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord does require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's action. I think that's a stand on righteousness. Your walk. To do justly, not to think justly. To do justly. To love mercy to walk humbly, walk, that's, a, that's an action, right? Walk humbly with your God. How about Proverbs 21.3? It says, to think righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Except it doesn't say it that way. It says to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. How about this one, 2 Timothy 3.16? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. If we do not issue correction, there's a problem. But doctrine, reproof, correction for instruction in righteousness. Now, I don't know how you can instruct one in righteousness and it's just in your head, but you're not, you're not vocalizing it. You're not acting it out. It's not a verbal thing. Sometimes we can instruct righteousness in a very verbal way to someone. Other times, our, the way that we live our lives before the Lord. Now, listen can be an instruction in righteousness to those around us. Amen? It's been said before that you may be the only Bible that they ever read. Maybe they don't have a Bible. Maybe they've never picked up a Bible. Maybe they come from some background where they were told, you know, who knows what kind of baloney that they were told or that some of us were told, right? But they see your faith in action. Now listen, they see our faith in action. That is a demonstration of righteousness. So there are many aspects of this, my friends. Many aspects of it. How about this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 19 and 20? Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does and teaches them. Not just teaches them, not just even thinks them, but does them. It's living scripture out in your life. It becomes a part of who we are as Christians. Not just what we know, but who we are affects what we do, amen? It goes on, there's more. It goes on where it says, for I say to you, now this is a real biggie, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. I think it's easy to forget. Guys, there are so many verses dealing with this. The issue of righteousness. I mean, we could go on and on, well, like we said, you know, hundreds of them. We could go on and on and on. I think that we've covered enough just right here to make the point. What do you think? Now, listen. Moving on from there, there's something else that I really want to talk about. Really want to talk about this evening for just a few minutes. We covered it a lot last week, and it's just a hot button, button topic, okay? And guys, you all know me enough to know, at least I hope you know me enough to know, I don't like sensationalism, okay? I, just, I have no interest in sensationalism and, and that kind of stuff, and, you know, there are those out there that play, the, that play those games, um, and I guess if you want to say it, it, it can work for them in, in a particular way. So I'll just leave it at that, okay? Uh, not interested in that. 
whatsoever. And there, there can be a lot of sensationalism that can take place in um, Bible prophecy world, right? I'm sure many of you have seen it. I, guys, I've seen this for decades, and it's, it's really only getting worse, um, to be honest with you. Part of my goal um, and some of the men that I know, part of our goal is to bring balance, all right, in the Bible prophecy world. I, I, I feel so strongly about it, guys. I, I am very passionate about it because without a proper balance of the understanding of, of many of these things, well, where there's no balance, there's what? Imbalance, right? And the enemy loves to play on, play games, uh, you know, uh, in those kinds of things. So all of that being said, and please hear me out. Please, please, please hear me out. What I'm about to say, this is not a criticism. It, you can call it a critique. There's a big difference between a critique and a criticism. I am not criticizing anyone in what I'm about to say. By the way, I have to say this, this hot uh, beverage, uh, Jeremy, uh, has done me well. Thank you. <laughs> very, very well. So what's that? Yeah, there we go, <laughs> from son to father. So here we go, what I'm going to say. I must respectfully disagree, and I do mean this from the bottom of my heart, respectfully disagree with some out there on their eclipse observations and the conclusions that some of them come to that are circulating some of those observations. Good men, some very good men out there. Very good men that love the Lord. Uh, okay? Um, and just because I say something, guys, doesn't make it right either. Right? Let, let's understand that. All right? Um, I mean, your word, the word says to be a Berean. All right? And uh, uh, we're all trying to figure out the things that are, that are happening uh, around us. And... and and is there biblical significance with this or with that? Is there not? What does the Bible say? Is there biblical precedence? Those kinds of things, okay? We're all learning and, and, and growing, all right? So um, I never, ever, ever, I, I, I certainly know that I, I have a lot to learn. We all do, okay? Uh, but I will say, though, that I, will, I do respectfully disagree with some um, on their eclipse observations. You know, the whole eclipse that's going to be happening here in, in, uh, in April here and, uh, and on the conclusions that are circulating that. I want to go on record. I want to go on record saying that the total eclipse of 2024 and the eclipse before that, the, uh, the total eclipse in 2017, uh, and I will emphatically say, emphatically say, does not have any direct Biblical, end times, prophetic, significant. Okay? I believe that if we are not careful, my friends, please hear me out. If we are not careful, in our excitement that the king is coming, we can start reading into things and looking at this graph and that graph and this map and, and this equals, this equals, that equals, that. And, and it's just like, uh, you know, before you, you know it, it's like you're playing, uh, what was the game we, well, we played when, when we were kids. Remember Twister? I like Twister. Twister was fun, you know? It, it's, like playing, it's like playing Twister with, with the things that are going on out there and trying to, Trying to make things fit that don't fit. Remember that? I don't know what this thing was called. And they still make them. It's so funny. The toys that we grew up with, they're still making these things, you know. It was like this round kind of red thing. And it, and it had the, the different holes and the pegs. And the pegs would be yellow. And you'd have the, the square and the circle and the triangle and that kind of. It's like trying to make the circle peg fit in the square hole. It, it, it doesn't work. Okay? It, it just doesn't work. So let's talk about this here for just uh, a moment. Um, 
I'm not going to put out there the name because I don't know if this individual would, would want their name uh, put out there with this. Um, but a former cartographer, a former cartographer with an oil and gas company and loves to tinker with maps and those kinds of things, uh, sent this to a friend of mine who sent it to um, a handful of us. And uh, the first that I'll show you, right? Let's go here. The first right here is a map from NASA. It's an official NASA eclipse map for April 8th of this year. This is the official map. Now, it doesn't have on because it's not including the 2017 eclipse. And you know, they got the whole big thing. X marks the spot. Oh, it sounds so ominous. And we're just going to, oh, yeah, okay. All right, anyhow. So they don't have that on there. All they're doing is they're just showing the map of the eclipse and the area there uh, uh, that it's going, the total solar eclipse and uh, so on and so forth and through Texas and yada, yada, yada. The second map that we're going to show with all of the, and some of you are aware of this and some of you are not, there are some places in the United States that are called Nineveh. There's a place in the United States, a, a, a town or whatever that's called Rapture or something like that. So there's Nineveh. <gasps> there's Rapture. Oh my goodness, it must mean something. Based on what? Did the Bible say that when there's a total eclipse that goes across some country and it's going through cities and towns that are called Rapture and Nineveh, that it means something. No, it doesn't even say that in the Word, does it? Nowhere. You'll never find it. And by the way, if it means something, what does it mean? Will someone please tell me what it means? Even if it did say that, what does it mean? Okay. The second map that I'm going to show you is an eclipse map with all of the Ninevehs that have been circulating. This one now has the 2017, so you got the X marks the spot thing. And when you look in there, you know, you got the arc uh, place there that um, is kind of marked on there. But you see the different, look, Nineveh, Rapture, Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. Nineveh way up there, if you look kind of going up by Nova Scotia and all of that. Do you see that? You, if you guys can see that. I know the people that are in, uh, at home watching, you can see it a lot easier. Okay. This is the ex second eclipse map with all the Ninevehs and all that stuff. This map has been tampered with. The map's been tampered with. The information has been falsified, but this is going around. It's been falsified. Now, I will tell you who, just to, just to uh, give uh, credit to him for sending uh, this to me, this is um, from Lee Brainerd, okay, sending me uh, these maps that he got from somebody else, okay? The information has been falsified. The third map that I'm going to show you, overlaying the eclipse path with geographic information. Now look at this right here. Oh, we got Nineveh is technically outside of the total eclipse, the one down there in Texas. We've got uh, the one up there in uh, Nineveh Township up there. That's outside. And that, the one that that's outside of was the 2017 one. The 2017 one is the one in blue. The 2024 is the one in red. Okay. Then you got another Nineveh, another Nineveh, another Nineveh, New York, Nineveh up there, all that kind of stuff. And then you got these two, the one in, looks like Indiana and um, Ohio in there. So two of all of those Ninevehs are the only ones that are actually in there. You see, guys, this is what happens. When, when we're not careful, and I, I'll be honest with you, I said this, I think it was with Mondo Gonzalez actually last week we were talking about this. If we're not careful as Christians, and see, this is part of what I've tried to do. I try to bring balance to things that are out there because the enemy would love to get Christians excited. Let's get them pumped, guys. Pump it up, right? Pump it up, pump it up, right? And get them so excited, and then we get egg on our face. And then all of a sudden, we don't want to talk about those things anymore. But some of us remember. And some Christians that are weaker in the faith 
are like, well, all of this is baloney. Because they, 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 they put it all together and say, well, all of this is baloney that you guys speak of. So I'm not even le- paying attention to Bible prophecy. Or maybe even worse yet, I'm just walking away. Okay? I've seen it happen, guys, a number of times. I've seen it happen. So it's really that big of a deal. That's the reason why a number of us, we try to bring balance to what's out there. Look, I'm all about being excited. I'm all about the king is coming. I can't wait to, you know, a number of things, right? But I don't want to get lost in the excitement where it becomes a poor witness or, or, or it becomes a stumbling block to someone. Or we're just sharing things just for the sake of excitement. But there's nothing in the word that, it, that talks specifically about something. Where does the word of God ever say that, well, when one eclipse happens in one year and another eclipse happens in another year, total eclipse, and they cross paths, that it means something when they cross paths. Where is that verse? Please tell me where the verse is in the word where it discusses this. It's not there. Okay, so these are the things that, that concern me. Like I've been saying, this is a lot of hype about nothing, has no biblical significance or connection, just another distraction. And then when they say this, guys, listen, again, this is not, uh, this is just my critique on these things, all right? Then when they say, what bad things may happen, this is an omen for America and God's judgment on America and everything. Guys, God doesn't need an eclipse and an X marks the spot thing to, to judge America. Okay. <laughs> like, I, you know, uh, like Lee Brainer has, had, had said, uh, he said, I believe, and I agree with him, I believe America is already going through um, uh, forms of judgment. And, with, um, and if we continue to go down the road that we are going down with how we treat uh, Israel and our uh, demands that we keep on placing upon Benjamin Netanyahu and everything, uh, I think things could even get much worse. Remember what it says in the word in the book of Genesis, I will support those or I will bless those who bless thee and I will curse those who curse thee. And God's word isn't going to change. It hasn't changed on that, guys. It hasn't changed on that. In fact, you can actually check out um, in um, Bill Koenig's Eye to Eye. I think you've got to have a membership for that. But in, or in his book or whatever, Eye to Eye, you can actually check out the connections between every time the United States, uh, just from our own country standpoint, has uh, done something that has gone uh, anti-Israel. Oh, my gosh, guys. It's, it's, really, it's off the rails, and it really does make you think. It really does make you think. Anyhow. So there are those that say, well, something bad's going to happen. And now I'm going to put this out there. And this is what I said in, uh, to a few guys. Look, bad things will happen when this eclipse takes place in America on April 8th. Because bad things are going to happen on April 8th and on April 7th and on April 9th. Bad things because bad things happen. Because we live in a fallen world. But where did the word say, not only you got this eclipse and you got this eclipse, where's the parameters? Where's the parameters? And then this is going to happen specifically when that happens. Where is that? It's not there. So see, it, it, it sets people up where you can literally fill in the blanks. And make it mean whatever you want it to mean. Right? Because we know that bad things will happen on that day. Because bad things happen every day in the fallen world. And so, be careful. If something really bad happens that day, that you don't go down the mindset, that's this, because it's not, it's not here. Yes, the word talks about eclipses and things like that, that's, but this is different, what they're saying. They're, putting, they're trying to put two things together that don't go together here, guys. I'm telling you. Bad things happen because that's what happens in any given day. Scripture, the word, and even the eclipse prophets, the eclipse prophets, 
don't even provide any specific parameters by which to look in or by which to look to that we can substantiate any of this, do they? They don't. It's all subjective. It's just vague as usual, and afterwards they can say, aha, see, there you go, there you go. Don't fall, don't fall for it, guys. There are some guys out there that, are, that have good intentions, and they just get caught in the excitement of things, okay? I'm not saying that makes them bad guys. It doesn't, okay? I believe that there are some out there that have bad intentions and just like utilizing these things to get more clicks and uh, make money off of it for some of those that make money off of those things and that kind of stuff. And, you know, so some do have bad intentions. Others, they, they, they just fall prey to it just based on the excitement. OK, so uh, let's understand that um, as well. But I think it's important to have a little bit of that perspective when we look at this, because we're talking about something that's going to happen here in roughly, what, a week and a half, two weeks or something from right now. I, I don't know the exact day of the week, just that it's uh, April 8th, you know. Cause th and the reason why is because, to be honest with you, I just don't care. I just don't care because Scripture doesn't give me a reason to care about it. And that's why I don't talk about it. Or, well, I talk about it only from the standpoint of trying to bring balance to what is, uh, what is uh, uh, out there and being discussed um, uh, in many ways. So anyhow, I hope that, that, ha that helps you guys. I hope that gives a little bit of, um, um, brings a little balance and a little bit of understanding um, to those things. Are total eclipses cool? Yeah, they're pretty cool, you know, um, but uh, leave it there. Leave it there. This is, is not what it is being promoted uh, to be. I've gone down this road with other things in the past, guys, um, without just, you know, rehashing some things. I've gone down this road with some other things in the past, and uh, it's uh, kind of like deja vu, to be honest with you. It really is for me. It's like deja vu. So, um, but anyhow, I hope some of that helps. So um, with that, Let's uh, let's pray. And wow, praise the Lord. I cannot believe that I got through an hour and a half uh, <laughs> with how my voice was going. So. Um, all right. Let's pray. Lord, we, we just thank you for this evening, Lord God. Um, at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is 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 you, Lord. And and uh, and our response to you, Lord, what we do with Jesus. Lord, you made us and and you made us, Lord. Well, you don't do anything without reason. So, Lord, you made us with reason. You made us with uh, your plan and your purpose. And Lord, we hear your church, your people, your children. We want to be about your purpose, Lord. And I just pray that that we're excited where we should be excited about things. And that we're not excited where you don't give us that liberty, Lord, to be excited about things. And so, uh, Lord, may we just have that balance in our Christian walk and in our witness. Uh, Lord, we pray right now for any that may be watching or here um, uh, in the chapel uh, this evening, Lord, for any who do not who have not called upon you, Lord, to be saved. That scripture says that unless a man is born again, you said, that means born of your spirit, he will not see the kingdom of God. Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by you. There's no other way. There is no other way, Lord. And so, Lord, your word shows us to put our trust in you. We can't earn our salvation. We can't, uh, through good works, earn our way to, to heaven. Literally, Lord, you came down to us to save our souls, to provide that way, that means for us to be saved through faith in Jesus Christ, through your redemption, literally that redemptive act upon the cross of Calvary when you shed your precious sinless blood as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world that your blood was shed as scripture shows us and says for the remission of our sins. 
Lord, we can have that peace with God, that salvation. We can be cleansed of our sins and have the assurance of salvation by way of faith in your gracious gift to us, Lord. And so, Lord, we just reaffirm our trust in you, our faith in you. We thank you for moving in our lives and in our midst. Lord, thank you for loving us. We love you back. In Jesus' precious name. And all God's church said, amen and amen. God bless you, my friends. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.